so hello students i welcome you all to this lecture in this lecture we are going to discuss the core part or very important part of every operating system that is known as kernel so as i have already mentioned few of the properties of kernel we consider kernel is the central part of every operating system it controls system resources like memory or input output or a number of other resources so it controls the system resources it also provides a layer of abstraction between the hardware and software so directly it deals with the hardware other software we install or operate above kernel level so when software try to interact with the kernel software or application software they use system call interface system call we will discuss in detail later on it is also responsible for managing system calls interrupt handling process scheduling memory management and device driver handling so all these are the very fundamental and core part of the operating system and all these things are being performed in an operating system by the kernel only kernel is the very first program when we start uh, loading the system like when we boot the system after power on kernel is the first part which will be loaded inside the memory and it will reside till the system is on so once we power off the system then only the kernel will be out of the memory right provides a stable and consistent environment for other programs as i have already told you so it provide the support for each and every program in the system like compiler or shell or any other program and it ensures that all the programs should get the required resources in terms of memory or other things the main components of kernels are system call there is memory management related modules so kernel take care about the management of physical memory or virtual memory it also take care about process management so how to process will be initiated the allocation of memory of the processes the management of the processes scaling and other things kernel will deal with all these things it also looks for device management so recognize recognition of the device or if a device has been removed or inserted or some modifications all these things will be taken care by the kernel only it also deals with the file system so the creation of the file modification of the file whatever the task will be performed kernel will come into the picture and it also provide the security right so if we look at the diagram the kernel which i am highlighting here this is the kernel portion so it is providing a kind of layer above the hardware layer and then the other softwares can get the support from the kernel so directly other software does not interact with the hardware right that's why we consider kernel is the core part or core module of every operating system then there are different types of kernels so the very first type of kernel is monolithic kernel as the term suggest monolithic means it connect all the modules as i have already written here it is a single large and st statically linked executable files that contains all the kernel code and data so as we have already discussed kernel need to perform a number of things like file management memory management process management device management kind of thing all these modules in monolithic kernels are statically linked or connected so all these modules in monolithic kernel will be loaded inside the kernel space there are two space in the ram we define when we load the operating system or you can say kernel resident portion so let's say this is the ram once we load the operating system the very first portion we consider it as the os 
portion allocated to OS. This is RAM or primary memory. Remaining portion we consider as the user space. So this is user space, right? Right. So kernel take care about the management of this particular space also. Okay. And all the data and modules of kernel, whatever the modules are there, they are linked and loaded in kernel space. So all the modules, maybe there are four or five modules which I have discussed. So one, two, three, four, five. All the modules, statically linked modules will be loaded in the kernel space. So this is I am saying kernel space. And this is user space, right? So whatever the modules will be loaded in the kernel space, they will get access of all the resources. They need not to take the permission for from any other modules because they are already executing in kernel space. And when those modules will be executing in the system, the mode bit will set as zero. So there is a concept of mode bit in operating system. When your CPU executes any instructions given by the kernel modules, the mode bit will be one uh, zero in that case. So you can say zero mode bit for kernel mode or one mode bit for user mode. We will discuss in detail, but you remember for that moment there is a mode bit concept. So when CPU executes, CPU is not really aware about uh, the instructions is given by the user or the kernel but based on the mode bit it executes the things and generate the output right so let's say there is an application program there is a program so i'm saying application program let's say and that application program is running in let's say user space so it will not have the privilege to access memory directly or create the files or print something on the screen. So when this application program wants to do that, like an application program want to create a file, then this application program will call system call. Okay. And once the system call will be called, then the, the mode bit will set to zero. And once the system call will return, the mode bit will again become the one. Okay, we will discuss in detail in further classes the role of mode bit. But monolithic kernel, all the kernel modules are loaded in the kernel space. So the size of the kernel will be large. It will take consume quite enough space in the memory. Right? So this kernel will be fast because all the modules will are loaded and statically connected. So it, this kernel functions very fast. Although the management of the kernel is tricky because if any of the module creates some problem, the overall kernel will be corrupted, right? So direct access to all the hardware's resources will be available because all the modules are loaded in kernel space, provides a uniform interface to system services. Often used in Unix-like systems, like Linux kind of or BHD systems uses monolithic kernel. That's why they are fast. Then micro kernel. Micro kernel, as the term suggests, it is having a smaller size. So as I have written here, it is a smaller kernel that provides only the basic services required for inter-process communication and device management. So there are very fundamental services this particular kernel execute in kernel space. The rest of the things will be loaded in the user space. Okay. So additional services are provided by user space program, which run in their own address space. Right. So your micro kernel provides privileges to very less modules. Other modules it, it start getting loaded inside the user space. Right. So it provides better security as compared to the monolithic kernel. The chances of corruption 
or getting corrupted the kernel will be less because the rest of the modules are working in the user space so any problem occurs the kernel modules can deal with it but the overall kernel will not be corrupted micro kernels are often used in embedded systems and real time operating systems okay now because monolithic kernel is having some of the drawbacks like in terms of management and the size of monolithic is very large it consumes enough amount of space in memory and micro kernels also having some of the drawbacks micro kernels comparatively slow as compared to the monolithic kernel because many of the modules of the kernels are getting loaded in user space so when something in user space need to be performed again the in intervention of kernel will be required and the overall process will be slow so there is next level the hybrid kernel has been has been designed which is having or a kind of combination of both monolithic and micro kernel so it is a combination of monolithic and micro kernel provides some services in kernel space and some in the user space so it is the mixture actually so the size of the hybrid kernel will be less as compared to monolithic in user uh, in kernel space right but it will be a bit of taking larger space as compared to the micro micro kernel right so it is in between somewhere it can provide the stability and performance for monolithic kernel because that was the issue in monolithic kernel the modularity and the flexibility for micro kernel micro kernel the benefit of micro kernel it is flexible right and it follows the modular approach there are different different modules we load inside the user space so hybrid kernel provide the benefit of both now there is exo kernel also it is a kernel that provides the minimal set of abstraction necessary for user level programs to manage the hardware resource directly actually in computers we do not use exo or there is another kernel like nano kernels kind of thing we primarily use monolithic or micro kernel or hybrid kernel right so such kind of kernels they are very specifically designed for embedded systems or the systems those are having less memory so these kernel is specifically designed so that these kernel will take very less space in the memory at the time of getting loaded right exo kernel are so the main focus of designing this kernel is minimalistic like minimal set of uh, modules will be loaded and often used in embedded systems similarly nano kernels also even it is having even lesser size than the exo kernel so it is having very very small size smaller than the even the micro kernel often used in embedded system or real time systems right so these are the all types of kernels i hope the information you are getting you will remember and in case you are having any doubt we will discuss in the class okay thank you see you in the class